All right, everyone. So I am not feeling well today. I have something that is not COVID, uh, but we have an, a 2018-19 MacBook Air that's not turning on. This is an 8200-1521 that randomly stopped turning on one day. Now we get 20 volts on the charger and we pull 0 0.04 milliamps, so 40 milliamps. So with something like this, we can have a few things going on. Um, it's also common for us to be in DFU at that stage. In this case, it is not in DFU mode and uh, restoring T2 firmware did not help, so it is definitely a board issue. So I'm going to go down my power rails and see what's going on. So I have my charger and I'm going to plug it in. And I want to check what PP bus is. If PP bus is 12.3 volts, that tells me we probably have an issue going on with our T2. If it is 12.6, that means our T2 to PMIC or T2 to ISL communication is good, um, and we have to look elsewhere. So here's our multimeter. I'm going to check PP bus G3 hot, and PP bus G3 hot voltage is 12.6 volts. We have something going on elsewhere. Now, I'm also, I also want to note that our trackpad does click. So if we click our trackpad, um, it does click. So that tells us our T2 kind of has a brain there. Um, and that makes me lean less on a PMIC or T2 issue and more towards something else. Next thing I want to just check real quick is all of our sleep, S2R and awake signals near our PMIC. Um, just to see if maybe one is missing. And let's see, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1. to see what that is, 0.0. .0. 1.8, that's the main one I'm worried about is sleep 1v8, and these are present. So, except for ones, I'm kind of going to think our issue is not here. Next thing I kind of want to jump to is PP3v3s5. Now, there's a lot of other rails that come before these on these T2 boards. Actually, we'll do 1v8s5 first. PP1v8. Score S5. Also, might be worth checking PP5VG3S and the rest of the G3S rails. Um, let's see here. Is there any easy access to measure 1V8G3S or 1V8S5? I should say. It's on the other side. I'm just gonna. Real, really quick check, 3v3 G3S, and that is, wait, am I measuring the right thing? Yeah, that's present at 3.3 volts, our PMIC is getting power, PP5V G3S is 5 volts, so that's there. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole power rail sequence, because again, I don't feel too good, and I just want this thing to work. So, PP1V8. Uh, PP1V8S5 will show up right around U, uh, U4755 and U4755 is going to be right here. And that is 1.8 volts, so we are getting into an S5 state, so at least one S5 rail is there. Now the importance on this, on these boards, the uh, 3V3S5 and 1V8S5 both come from our PMIC. And oftentimes when we have communication issues between our T2 and our PMIC, we will get both of those missing. The fact that one, let's now let's check and see if 3B3S5 is missing. Um, because now I'm kind of thinking, okay, we're in an S5 state. It, this isn't a usual common failure mode, so it's probably either going to be below S5 or 3B3S5 is missing. So look up PP3B3S5, PP3B3. S5. I probably didn't make any sense because I am sick. Um, but basically what I was getting at there is it's not common for S or for uh, 3v3 or, or 1v8 S5 to be present and the board still not to be turning on. So I'm going to guess something else is up. So 3v3 S5. Maybe it's 3.4 volts or 3.5 or 3.3 volts. I don't know. Let's see. It's going to show up right here. This is okay. 0.03 volts. So PP3V3S5 is missing. 
at this point we could have a bad PMIC we might have a short um, but we are getting we're getting somewhat up there in the power-up sequence now this is different obviously from a older board now I'm gonna check for a short and we have a short 29 ohms to ground hopefully it's not in our CPU but 29 ohms to ground is definitely too low um, for for this rail so I'm gonna go ahead and inject voltage and use thermal imaging and try and find this so let me go ahead and do that I'm just gonna solder a wire really quick on here there's a nice big point right here it's not gonna be in the scope sorry just wanna do this quick And that's down there. I'm going to move this back. And we have our power supply set to 3.3 volts. And we're instantly pulling three amps off the bat. So let's see, is our wire touching anything? Nope. Yeah. Soldered on there. The wire is getting very hot. I'm going to jump over to my thermal and see. Oh boy, something on the other side of the CPU is getting hot in this general area. Let's see here. So on thermal, it looks like something right on this side is getting hot. It's probably in the CPU core. Let's see. Does anything sizzle? Oh, I heard sizzling. Now where is it coming from? Probably can't hear that. Aha! See this little guy? See how he's boiling? That's probably our fender there. Let's, let's see. I found you. I'll get a new cap in there. Let's see if our short is resolved. And it is indeed resolved. Nice. Let me clean up my lousy soldering right here. A little bit of flux. try and clean up this pad this is right on the other side of the CPU so I want to be careful when I'm using heat here because I don't want to kill my CPU with heat that would be very bad I'm gonna switch to a smaller tip because that's a small area to work in Sorry, I'm not going more into the diagnostic steps on this particular one because, yeah, I'm not feeling good. I need even a smaller tip than the BC1. This is a really, really tight area. Let's switch to my smallest tip, which is a T15 ILS. Maybe a J-tip would do good here. Will this J-tip fit in here? Yeah, J-tip's nice. J-tip will work good. or it's going to make a colossal mess which is probably going to be the case. Let me bump my heat all the way up to 840. 
such a small area to work with. There's my wick. I think that'll be good. We go grab a donor board and a replacement cap. Now I'm going to be really quick when I do this because I do not want to kill our CPU. Our CPU is very sensitive to heat and we do not want to keep our hot air on the CPU for a long period of time. So I'm going to go in there hot and quick because longer heat at a lower temperature would be worse than short than higher heat at sh shorter time. So here's our cap. Let me get right in here. The heat sink is on too. Come on. All right, there we go. Come on, come on, come on. There. Done. Gonna let this cool for a few seconds. All right, this should be sufficiently cooled now. I'm just gonna get Q-tip and alcohol and clean my flux up. If there's any there, very little residue. Still don't like to leave it. This board was not liquid damaged, so ultrasonic cleaning is not required. See, the board is still wet over here. I'm going to dry this off. Now let's see if we get normal amp draw. So I'm going to move my microscope over here. Shut off the lights so you guys can see the amp meter. And I would like to see uh, 0. Point f there we go, 20 volts, 0. 0.6, should go to like 0. 0.14 or so, 45, 49. And I would say this is probably booting current, but I don't know for sure, so it's time to test in the enclosure. All right, our board is set back in the enclosure with everything plugged in except the Wi-Fi antennas. And we have 5 volts, 20 volts, we get trackpad click, 0 0.57, 0 0.69, I have a spinning fan. And do we get image and boot is the real question here. Chime and Apple logo, that took a long time. But we have Chime. Now let's see if this boots into the OS. Yeah, sometimes boards can take a while to post. And here we have it. This is fixed. And that's it for today. I am going to fix a few more MacBooks and probably go home. So thanks for watching. And I hope this video helps you in some way. Um, it's common on T2 MacBooks or PP3V3S5 and PP1V8S5 to be missing due to T2 issues or PMIC issues. So... Not to be confused with a shorter course, so don't go down the the right the wrong road. Always check for a shorter course, um, but this is fixed. So thank you for watching.